Okay, we are going to get started. So, thanks to all of you in the room. Thank you for being with us. For all of you live on YouTube Live, a very welcome to Hanover Mesa. Welcome to the Schneider Electric Press and Analyst Conference for 2017, our annual Press and Analyst Conference. I am Marty Hanna. I lead our analyst relations activities for Schneider globally. And really, it's a great pleasure to be with, you, be with you at this great event, to share not only an overview of our industry business and how we're seeing things and what we're hearing from our customers today, but we've also got some great news to share with all of you about ecostructure and our ecostructure architecture. So a couple logistical things. If you have a question during this uh, conference, we absolutely want your questions. If you're in the room, just raise your hand and we will find you and get a mic to you so our virtual listeners can hear your questions. If you're online, again, welcome. And please ask your questions either through the chat on YouTube Live or on Twitter. Ask your questions using that hashtag, hashtag HM17SE. Okay, you will also, all of you, receive our digital, uh, our digital press packet after, uh, after this conference is over. So please be on the lookout for that. That's gonna have all your news, all your information. If you don't get it, please contact your local, your local press or analyst contact and we'll get that to you, okay? So without further ado, I have the great pleasure for the first time at Hanover for Schneider to introduce one of our, our newest executive committee members, leader of our industry business, Mr. Peter Herwick. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, on behalf of Schneider Electric, a very warm welcome uh, here in Hanover at the Hanover Fair and also to our guests who are uh, online. Uh, I like actually that we do have a live event because it's also nice to see people and not assume who's on the other side of the camera. So there is a little bit of a limit to a digitization. You see, Schneider Electric is a very simple company. We do energy management and automation. And I can tell you we're doing this pretty well. Last year we have done a revenue of 25 billion euro and that's three times more than we did 10 years back. So quite a growth trajectory that you can see uh, for, for our business. Actually, I should move maybe to one of the next slides here. Let me see whether I can uh, get this done. And, um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not only growing fast, we're also a technology company. And uh, we've, we've invested 5% of our revenue consecutively over the years in research and development. And uh, we're employing roughly 144,000 employees globally. And uh, for those of you who are in, in Poland, um, and I know that uh, some of the uh, press folks from Poland is also here. Um, in, in Poland, we also have quite a large setup with uh, five factories and one of our global support centers that we have. And if you have specific questions on Poland, I, in, I invite you, our Poland country president is also here where, where he's, uh, you know, Jacques, uh, he's, he's sitting there in the back, so feel free to, uh, to contact him uh, afterwards, he's going he's gonna to be with us. So, you know, one of the things we believe in Schneider Electric, um, we, we believe that energy is a basic human right. Everybody should have it at every time in every place. And while the energy environment is changing very, very quickly, we want to assure that life is on for everybody. Reliably, efficient, sustainable, but then also we need to digitize it. And uh, I apologize for the little mistake here. This should say digitized. And that's one of the key points we're going to be talking about today, digitization. When we're talking about energy availability, 
we do believe that the energy consumption is going to grow by 50% until the year 2050. And uh, that means that the electricity is going to grow two times faster than we've seen it grow today. And there are still 2.3 billion people on the planet that don't have access to reliable electricity today. So that's a good story for, uh, for Schneider Electric. But um, obviously we also want to make sure that we can uh, give this energy much more efficient to our customers. Uh, because it needs to be sustainable, it needs to be decarbonized. And today, still 82% of the buildings on the globe are non-energy efficient buildings, and that's where the company can help. But the means to do all of that is digitization. Digitization has massively increased in speed, and uh, we'll talk about this later on when we talk about uh, some of the heavy industrial applications. Um, we'll have 10 times more incremented connected devices uh, than people by 2020, 30 billion connected things by 2020, and uh, it's all about software. Everything runs on software. And that's one of the things that also, you know, you could say, it's a, it's a mega trend and it's important to, to note and we'll be, we'll be talking uh, about that. Now we have a very simple, we have a very simple answer on that um, because if we want to connect all the devices, we don't want to necessarily connect all the devices in the world. We want to connect all the devices in the domains where our company has a big strength whether it's in an industrial application, whether it's in a data center, whether it's in a grid or whether it's in a building. And the beauty is that all comes together in an industrial application. And uh, we'll we can take uh, the example of a simple uh, farmer plant here or food and beverage plant. And when you, when you visit our booth, we're going to take that um, apart for you that, you that you can see how we um, connect the whole uh, factory and uh, have software run everything whether it is a reliable grid that may be in the factory with cogeneration, uh, whether it is making sure that there is uh, power available 24-7 in a very reliable uh, way, that we have um, a very um, uh, safe, secure, and fully automated building or uh, a warehouse with a constant temperature of, uh, of the um, uh, HVAC that secures that the food is not going to get bad, or if we're in the, um, in the primary and secondary process of the plant and the packaging machinery that goes in there, all of that can be uh, connected, and uh, if this is a heavy R&D site, they may even have their own data center because they don't want to you know, send the information somewhere to the cloud. They want to have everything on-premise, and that's what we also do, whether it's on-premise or whether it's in the cloud. And uh, Schneider Electric is, as you know, uh, one of the uh, premier world suppliers into the data center space. Now, there's one simple architecture that we have uh, uh, created, um, and it's called EcoStructure. It's a very simple structure, and it uh, has an, a large ecosystem of partners that, that support us. And there is an innovation on every level in the simple architecture that is geared towards um, the, um, uh, the, the four end markets that I've talked about, four end markets being building, energy, grid, and data center. It's one architecture, and then there are, of course, six different domains where Schneider Electric has the experience of many, many, many years, how processes uh, and uh, uh, function at those customers to be able to implement that into the software that is run everywhere. It starts off with connected products. Most of you know Schneider Electric as a product company, and um, we're pretty good at products. We're doing tens of millions of products every year, and I tell you, 50% of those are connected today. Even things like a normal circuit breaker is connected today. And we've actually introduced an air circuit breaker last year at the Hanover Fair that is fully connected. And uh, how that can help some of the customers that have critical infrastructure, be it in a building or in a plant, I'll show you in a minute. Now, obviously, these products need to be connected uh, either to a control that's very close to the process. That's what we call edge control. This can be a building automation system. That can be a PLC. That can be a DCS system. It can be 
um, a, a grid automation system. It uh, can be something simple as uh, a controller that, uh, that runs a refrigerator, and uh, that needs to be close to the process, and the connected products can communicate with that very easily. But they can also communicate one level up to the software um, and analytics um, and services level, whether it's on-premise or whether it's in the cloud, fully agnostic of what the cloud system is that's going to be used uh, out there. So that's basically you know, the structure that we're talking about. So but what's, um, what's really new behind it? There are really two new things that we uh, want to introduce here uh, at, uh, at the Hanover Fair. The first thing is ecostructure power. Why is that relevant? We all know the, you know, the old pipeline of energy generation, transmission, distribution to the consumer. One way, very much um, um, unidirectional. Now, this has changed fundamentally in the last years, and obviously, um, many of those of you being out of Germany, Germany has been the laboratory, uh, so to say, of uh, a decentralized uh, energy generation, where um, you know generation was done in the past central, now it's decentral. It was just purely mechanics. Today it's mechanics plus digitized. It has been carbonized. We want to move to decarbonized. We had consumers, we have prosumers. So we have a very very complicated. Um, um, system that, uh, that needs to be managed out there. And how can we manage it better than uh, with the uh, ecostructure, ecostructure power? And as I said earlier, it starts off very simple with the, uh, with the connected products that, uh, that, we, that, we need to, um, that we need to utilize. Similar, simple circuit breakers, gateways, meters, all of them connected. You can see them. Uh, at, uh, at our show, um, when, uh, of course, you want to um, measure how much is consumed or how much is produced, it'd be good to have this information directly from the breaker to a supervisory level, either to an edge control, if it's a very complex uh, in environment, like a, you know, one of the larger or critical buildings that might be an industrial infrastructure, where you have a power skater system in the uh, operations control room, or if it's a simple building or a small building, uh, you might have a facility expert who runs it, who wants to see it uh, maybe you know, on his mobile device and want to see what's, uh, what's going on in, in the factory, uh, in the building. And um, with that, in, in, in the large building, um, you, know, you have a, a whole staff that, that runs that, and if, if you have several um, uh, factories, you want to make sure that you bring all this information to, um, uh, you know, to a level where you can analyze it, where you can optimize it to make sure that you have as uh, little energy usage as possible, while at the same time guaranteeing 24-7 availability of power. And then if you move to the smaller uh, or medium-sized buildings, uh, the ecostructure facility advisor will help the staff that is usually not um, as experienced as you would have it in a larger site to operate the, um, uh, the, the system and make sure that um, we are um, um, online basically 24-7. So having the right data available, I think, makes a lot of sense in this space. Now let's move to an more of an industrial application. Same structure, same architecture, always the same, connected products, edge control, analytics. I'll give you two examples from the domains, machine and plant, and we're going to be starting off um, with uh, uh, trying to understand a little bit better what's happening and, and why digitization in the industrial space is uh, so, so, so important. While our customers in the industry worry about the end-to-end -end operational efficiency of their operations, that's how they make money. Um, in the past, this was achieved with monolithic, inflexible systems. Today, with the availability 
of sensors all over the place with unlimited storage capabilities with a very high speed of communication totally new means of controlling their facility become possible. You know, while the technology may be evolutionary, and we had introduced EcoStructure in the year 2007, the effects of communication, of storage, of speed have changed, and it allows to revolutionize some of the business models that some of our customers have. I give you some very simple and some very complex examples here uh, to, to understand. Actually, the first one of uh, uh, the car washing machine, you can, uh, it was already printed this morning in, in, the, uh, in the Financial Times, but uh, I'll repeat it quickly. So we have a customer that produces car washing machines, hundreds of them, thousands of them, and um, the, they're installed all over the place. The, um, their business model is actually they want to make money on the shampoo that they sell to the end customer that goes into this washing machine. Now, um, if he misses that the shampoo is empty, the user or the owner of the washing machine can go somewhere else and buy the shampoo in another place. He loses all the revenue source of, uh, of, that, uh, of that shampoo. So, you know, they have asked a couple of uh, companies out there uh, who can quickly um, connect this car washing machine to our SAP system. And, um, you know, off we were with uh, some of our other, our other contenders. And uh, so we connected the washing machine to the SAP system. These guys know three days in advance before the shampoo is empty, they ship the shampoo to the owner, and the owner doesn't need to go out and buy it somewhere else. They have 100% of the shampoo of their customers. I mean, what kind of a nice business model is that? Um, and obviously, as you move into, into these kind of applications, the customer comes up with, uh, with new ideas, how he can further um, generate services for, for his customers. Great um, example, very simple example. You can imagine that the, you know, the car washing machine becomes a very complicated packaging machine uh, or a, a blister packaging machine, some of them which you see here at the show and th similar things um, are available. If you want to see a lot of uh, those machines, um, we also invite you to the Interpack that's going to be in Dusseldorf. There are going to be 300 machines equipped with the uh, EcoStructure uh, machine technology. So something that's, uh, that's out there. Now let's, let's move to, uh, to an airport. Um, and uh, you, know, you, you want to make sure that this airport runs very well. You need to have power available 24-7, uh, but at the same time there is so much data on an airport, so much infrastructure. You want to make sure, and uh, Dusseldorf Airport is a, is a good example where our um, uh, industry system platform 2017 is installed. We are gathering all the data that's available to give them full transparency what's happening at the airport uh, to, to allow them to make the right decisions uh, and of course also implement you know, additional intelligent means uh, to make this happen. Now for this uh, wonderful water wastewater plant, um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about it, I have a customer talk about it. I'm just uh, trying to dig out what he said in uh, Yara Valley Water. Um, you know, they've, they've used a traditional SCADA system where they've had 150 um, uh, incidents per month, and he says within four months, uh, by applying EcoStructure, this has reduced uh, to less uh, than 50. So by a factor of three, it went down by implementing uh, our um, uh, EcoStructure um, uh, technology, ecostructure uh, for industry. And uh, as I said before, you know, great, great products like uh, Altiva Process Drive, fully connected with um, uh, application knowledge on them for a pump, or our field devices, HMI system. So these are all products that are, that are connected to the different uh, control systems, be it a very, very small um, a PLC control in, in a refrigerator, a normal PLC control, large PLC control, DCS, uh, system um, all, all the way up and uh, then what's uh, key is when you move to the analytics and uh, uh, software um, this is really where our strength is and what we're going to be introducing um, uh, today at, uh, uh, at the Hanover Fair. It is our industrial system platform 2017 powered by Wonderware. And, uh, you know, 
other than many others that are out there, um, we're, um, we're a small company, we only have a, a couple of development engineers, but we have 4,000 development partners, companies out there that are able and utilizing our system, and that's available for more than 10 years. We have hidden it very well, uh, but uh, we're going to be a little bit more active as, as others also become active in, in advertisement. And there are 160,000 development engineers out there who are capable of using our system and developing actually applications that are very useful. 100,000 customers where this is already installed. 100,000 customers, 2 million licenses sold since the introduction of the system globally. So, how many datas are we monitoring on the installed base? 20 billion data sets. So that's 20 plus another nine zeros behind of data sets that are managed by the software. And uh, not to stop at the billions, but also go to the trillions. There are four trillion transactions that are processed and stored every day. That's a massive amount of data, either on-premise or in the cloud. So we've got to digitize the, the, the light a little bit there in, in, in the back. So I'll, I'll let that rest for you with a second, for a second, because I think that's uh, quite uh, important data that clearly differentiates us uh, out there uh, to a lot of marketing message. Again, you know, 160,000 developers uh, out there, not our own, others. We have, we have some for ourselves. Two million licenses sold, 20 billion uh, parameters uh, operated um, in our installed base, and four trillion transactions on a daily basis uh, also stored some of them. So how does it work? You know, this real-time um, uh, information and operation control um, a platform that, that is there that goes uh, through, uh, throughout a lot of end markets from food and beverage to pharma, water, wastewater, oil and gas, metals, mining, utilities, and what, uh, what have you. It's the, same, it's the same information management and operations control software that is there. And on top of that, we run applications uh, either for asset performance management um, and uh, services or in operations management, and then, of course, also in engineering and design. And um, from the different vertical markets here, or end markets, you can see where our specialists are and our specialities are in, uh, in that area. The beauty is the 160,000 development engineers that are out there who know how to operate the system, how, know how to develop applications, they can make those applications available on a marketplace. So will we. And from that marketplace, the whole community using our system can draw and buy applications uh, out of there. And the customer has the benefit from whatever was developed, whether useful or very useful. Now, um, obviously, we don't want to only show transparencies. We also want to uh, demonstrate to you how the, uh, uh, how the system works. And uh, I'll have... Um, Norm um, uh, Thorlaxen, our, our VP of the industry software, uh, do that because he's much more capable than, uh, than, than I. But um, uh, before or while uh, Norm um, um, predicts uh, how his um, spheres in his mind um, are gonna, gonna work in a couple of minutes, uh, we'll have a short introductory uh, video that allows me to go off the stage, him come on, and then later on I come back to wrap it up and uh, uh, also answer questions that you may have. This is what we've been waiting for. A first of its kind operations management interface that turns engineers into design wizards and applications into agility. This is where immersive user experiences touch more corners of your organization and responsive content empowers innovation at every level. System Platform 2017 featuring InTouch OMI. The easy to build, easy to use, easy to own control platform for supervisory, SCADA, MES, and the industrial IoT.
VP for software. I'm responsible for the global P&L for our uh, key uh, automation platform and HMIs that we have within the overall uh, Schneider industry business. Um, so specifically today, as Peter uh, announced, we're introducing System Platform 2017 powered by Wonderware. So what is System Platform 2017 for those of us that aren't um, fully immersed in the space? It's our premier automation platform for everything from uh, data acquisition through to monitoring through to real-time control, from simple uh, basic information or basic applications such as the car wash station that, that, that Peter uh, gave as an example, all the way on up to uh, managing a full mining infrastructure of multiple mine sites and being able to put in a central control room across that massive infrastructure of thousands and thousands of assets. It's a, it, it's a highly optimized system that allows me to uh, build things once in a very object-oriented uh, manner and then be able to take advantage of building standards into my applications and then be able to reuse those standards out in the field. Very, very unique in the market, uh, not touched uh, by any one competitor as far as the capability that we have within System Platform existent today, and then System Platform 2017, which I'll talk about, uh, takes us completely to the next evolutionary step, so we're super, super excited about it. Uh, so, so some of the things that are unique about um, System Platform today as well as System Platform 2017, right? So it, it's, it's about how we build visual uh, mimics, right? How we build our interfaces for, for our client set. And I'll get into the details of that in a moment. It, it's also about how we've built the system to be not only very, very um, complementary to and value add when used with uh, Schneider uh, products, as Peter talked about, but also highly market agnostic, right? So the same capabilities um, exist, whether it be a Schneider product or a, another product. But again, when using Schneider products, we built in templates, we built in preference, we built in value add for the client base. And then also something that's very easy to use, right? From a, from a uh, system platform and from everything powered by Wonderware, we've always been very, very focused on maintaining a client's investment set. So we, 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 we don't... Um, prescribed to the mode of, well, we've got many, many different, um, say, monitoring and diagnostic systems, so I guess we'll have to move everything to a new monitoring and diagnostic system uh, to be able to bring some value and benefit to the client base. We feel that's uh, the wrong approach. We feel the right approach is to be able to uh, extend and evolve our systems so that those clients, those data stories that Peter was talking about, right, we're talking about petabytes of data that's been stored up. Right? Our clients, we know our clients want to use that source of information when making decisions. In fact, I know many of you write about it, um, the term called uh, dark data or black data, right? This is the IT organizations in our clients struggling to get down to the information that's already naturally being stored and collected within our control systems, right? That, that data exists, so how do we unleash that data in very light, simple applications and very light, simple architectures to be able to bring operational gain to our clients. And that's exactly what we're doing with uh, System Platform 2017. So System Platform 2017, as I alluded to, uh, scales very, very nicely, right? So as you think about maybe what's different today versus yesterday uh, from an IoT background, if you will. So one of the things that's changed quite dramatically is the number of devices and the cost to instrument something, right? If you were to look at something that wanted to uh, do vibration analysis, for example, you'd have to go out and buy a, a, a fit-for-purpose vibration analysis application from a vibration analysis company. Would five, five years ago, probably was 250000 to instrument a large turbine, right? Nowadays, I can do that same instrumentation for about $20,000. So the cost to instrument has gone down radically, and the number of products and devices to instrument has gone up significantly, right? The other thing that's happened within the software world is within the software world, I used to have to put in these large monolithic applications. My architectures were kind of um, very uh, clunky and, and, and hard to slice and dice, right? With System Platform today and System Platform 2017, we scale very nicely. So, so the thinnest, thinnest implementation of what you can now do with software is you can actually have a uh, product, such as a Schneider product, talking to an edge box, or maybe even that, that product, that Schneider product is directly connected to the web. That would be the, the thinnest implementation. We have examples of that. And it posts its information or publishes its information to a data store that's up in the web, running on Azure, running on um, um, Amazon Web Services. And then I can do my analytics against that data source that's up there, right? So with System Platform 2016 and 2017, I can go from the thinnest, thinnest, thinnest architectures 
which is literally a connected device coming up through Edge, coming up through a thin layer of software, web-enabled, up in the cloud, be able to do my analytics and close the loop. Excellent example, again, was that car wash uh, example that um, Peter walked us through, right? Super thin, super fast to put together, but huge, huge business value add for our client base. That's the, that's the dimensional piece that's changed on the software side from a thin, small set. The other thing that's changed on the software side, and I've been in the software business and in this, you know, HMI, SCADA, um, measurement world for, well, I started in 92, right? In 92, there was DOS systems. We we're just starting with Windows-based systems, had some Unix systems. But the, the scale of what we could do was limited. And the scale of what we could network together was limited, right? And so those dimensions of scale have changed radically over the years. And in fact, with our own data stores, just a couple of years ago with our own data stores, we were able to move up to um, over 2 million uh, data points in a single on-prem repository. Now with our cloud-based repository, we can go well beyond those 2 million data points stored, right? So again, that, that huge data example that Peter gave is the other dimensional piece of what's unique and what's changed and what our architecture fully supports. So again, very, very skinny down low as being able to scale up to massive, massive uh, levels that just weren't seen before uh, within the industrial automation market in a general sense. So System Platform 2017, what have we done specifically with System Platform 2017 um, versus the offer that's existing in the market today? So one of the things, a big refresh on, on the front end, the visualization, uh, bringing in all the facets of multi-touch, pan, zoom, scrunch, uh, those sets of capabilities. Also from a build your application standpoint, um, we've completely changed the model. So, in the past, if you were an engineer building a HMI, a automation platform screen, a SCADA screen, it was up to you as an individual or your organization to determine what was the best in practice for navigation. For example, how do I move from one screen to the next screen most efficiently? Or it was up to you to figure out what's the best in class way to present alarms to an operator or unique conditions that the operator might need to take action on, and, and how to associate that layout to the overall system, right? This was not easily done, and again, you know, I've seen many, many different applications. Everybody did it a little bit differently, and the end result was kind of the same. It was hard to get an operator to readily recognize critical events within the system that they needed to take um, advantage of. Not only that, but also, it took a lot of additional behind-the-scenes uh, kind of thought as to how I'm going to lay it out, and then in many times, scripting. I had to write lines of short logic that would associate a button with an action with a data point and a PLC. With System Platform uh, 2016 today, as well as 2017, we blow all that stuff apart. Right? So with 2017, we introduced the ability to actually build your navigations based upon best-in-class templates that we put in the box. Not only do you, do you build those navigations and those visualizations, you, li you literally kind of uh, build them in, in a similar way to the way you build web pages today, right? So it's almost a drag and drop down into a framework. The framework's already existent. And as I drop a graphic onto the canvas, one section of the canvas knows about the other section of the canvas and knows that the, the two data points are associated with one another. So now I can get rid of a huge amount of scripting that used to exist when I build my visualization screens. The other piece that we've been active on for the last couple of years is what we call situational awareness libraries. This, this is a new way of doing visualization so that I can now uh, present to an operator or a series of operators that might be responsible for tens and thousands of assets a different visual environment to interact with the system on that allows them to immediately recognize and be immediately alerted to conditions that I want them to take notice of. It's very different than the type of graphics that we used to build, which were kind of visual, uh, full visual representations of what something looked at. So graphically very, very rich and good looking. But the problem was from an operator standpoint, we've done studies with our consultants as well as uh, they've done studies in the market. That's actually a distraction for our operators because they can't readily pick out the piece of information that they need to be looking at. So huge steps there. Um, also from a uh, Sharing of information back and forth, right? So, so, so I talked about how the navigation panes know of one another and awareness, and I can get rid of some of the scripting uh, from building visualizations. We've also taken that a step further. So an example would be, say you're an upstream oil and gas operator, and you've got your wellheads uh, distributed geographically across a territory, 
And you might want to be able to see those wells in a map, and you might also have some, uh, let's say, local security. You've got video cameras associated with the sites. You've got some video um, feeds, and then you've got your process information, what's actually happening with the wells. Well, I should be able to uh, be able to select from the map a series of wells and have the, uh, have the system understand what I've selected and bring up the process graphics associated with those wells. Should also be able to bring up the, 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 the cameras associated with those wells. Why are we doing, and we can do that with 2017, so why are we doing that, right? When we talked to our clients and our users, we were shocked. We asked how many different applications does the average control room operator or the average SCADA operator interact with? And, and you can think of the easy ones. There's mail, there's the SCADA system, a, a few others. The numbers blew out to dozens, to two dozen of different types of applications that operators need to interact with when they're running a facility. So we're starting to build into our, our, our set, our offer, the ability to house this, these data coming from different sources and different systems and put them in context with the process information, the production information, the automation information that's naturally coming up through our, our, our eco-structure stack, right? So again, be it products from Schneider, high affinity built into the box, or a product from somebody else. But again, we're pulling the information up. Now we're starting to grab information from other systems, put it in context. Huge, huge advantage to not only our clients, but also the, the operators of the systems at our clients. And then, and then lastly, you know, easy to use. I talked about this before being a precept of our organization, you know, never destroying value. Never uh, creating a situation to where you have to move to a new standard and forego what you had before, right? So these things are evolutionary steps. Now, granted, in our opinion, System Platform 2017 is a monumental evolutionary step, but it's still an evolutionary step and allows you to leverage those data stores that have built up over years that, that Peter mentioned. Also, new models, right? Uh, so we're going to be the first industrial automation uh, player at the automation platform layer uh, to start to introduce uh, different commercial models. For example, a subscription. Peter already mentioned that we're very, very active with all of our solutions being either cloud-enabled, and you can run them in the cloud, or you can run them on-premises on or locally, but we're going to take that the next step as well and introduce new commercial models uh, for subscription consumption of these software components, which in the past have always been licensed on a traditional perpetual um, uh, license basis. So again, making it easier to use. In fact, I was having a conversation just earlier today at the conference with one of our large technology partners, um, and that's exactly what they want to do. They want to be able to take advantage of our software, run it in their factories, and just basically pay an, annual, an annualized amount. One amount that counts for the software, counts for the support. They can turn it on, turn it off as they see fit, scale it up, scale it down. A very, very simple uh, commercial model. So that's where we're trying to, uh, th that's where we're going with our, our new subscription capability. So lastly, I'll, I'll, I'll show everybody a, a quick demo. So put, your, put yourself in the frame. You are a, uh, you're a plant manager. You're maybe an operations manager. And you know, the logical thing that you're going to be interested in is what happened with the facility the day before or what's going on with a particular asset within a facility, right? So today, if you go into uh, sites, a lot of sites will have you know, the heads-up displays, the, that will say, okay, X number of units produced, number of days without incident, very, very common. Um, you'll also see uh, kind of simplified and on displays, are, are units up or are they down? Some facilities will have uh, verbal or sound-based communication that goes out through the facility to let people know what's going on. Right? All those are, 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 are specialty systems, right? They're, they're, they're unique things that I buy from unique vendors put into my plant, right? Well, where's all this going? Well, one of the examples where this is all going, again, another dimension of IoT, is it's all going to devices like this, right? We all use this thing and these platforms far more than we ever did, right? Imagine your day without mail on one of these things, right? We now, th this is our primary communication device, right? More and more is going here. So not only can we do all this information, push it to these devices, but now we can start to take advantage of new platforms such as Alexa. So for instance, let me, let me just ask Alexa a question. Alexa, ask Insight if anything unusual happened. Frankfurt R22 flow out was higher than usual, reported today at 9.59 a.m. Would you like the next headline? Yes. Frankfurt tank 400 level was lower than usual, reported yesterday at 9.46 a.m. Would you like the next headline? Thanks. 
So okay. <laughs> she almost threw me up. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So we're super excited. One of the things that we're announcing also here at this conference is our partnership with Microsoft and what we're doing with Microsoft, both from a um, visual, the next step in, in capabilities in AR and VR, but also what we're doing with them from a cloud and Azure standpoint. So uh, in the quick example that I just gave you there uh, with the end device, what we were doing was we're collecting information up through uh, either a very, very thin connection, like our example with the car wash, or a traditional example coming up through a um, automation platform application, maybe a SCADA platform. That information is then being pushed into our cloud repository, right? And then from our cloud repository, we're using one of our clients against that cloud repository. And that's what the end device is going and querying and asking information of, right? So let's say that I was, uh, one more example, let's say that I'm a water operator. One of the things I might be concerned about from a water operator, I'll, I'll ask her. Alexa, ask insight about pump energy usage levels. For pump energy usage, pump 101 power is 17.2 kilowatts, down 0.8 from yesterday. Pump 102 power is 17.7 .7 kilowatts, down 0 from yesterday. Alexa, stop. Stopped. Thanks for using Insight. Okay, so just a couple of quick examples, right? And this is also an example of um, how open the platform is as well, right? So this is a open technology platform, the uh, Alexa platform, communicating with Azure, with the data store, and the information coming up through, you know, both thin architecture, new architecture means, as well as traditional architectural means. So very, very open, again, uh, complementary and at value add when it's Schneider product that's underneath and going through the entire ecostructure stack, but also available on top of you know, anybody else's products and, and hardware as well. So very, very unique in that regard. So not only is it real in a sense that we're doing press releases with Microsoft, and I've shown you a demo here and we played a video, but real in what our clients are telling us. So from our beta client standpoint, the group that's working with us right now on System Platform 2017, specific to the engineering examples that I gave you from building out screens using a best-in-class IP-in-the-box framework dropping visuals in much like I build a web page today, our beta participants are reporting back to us astronomical numbers, as much as 60% engineering savings in building out my systems. Huge, huge improvement. Um, I talked about the situational awareness capabilities, right? That, that, that unique way of showing the visualization in a different construct than what it had traditionally been done in the HMI world, right? Both ourselves and our consultants in this space have, have documented findings of a 5x improvement when using situational awareness technologies and approaches versus traditional uh, highly, highly visual representative mimics. And then finally, 10% you know, uh, business gain, or up to 10% business gain from, from a level of operational improvement, uh, increased three throughput in systems, right? Because again, this is not only a platform for automation, but can also be a platform for uh, more expansive solutions such as manufacturing execution systems, batching systems sitting on top. And again, when, when done in that fashion, when using the system platform uh, powered by Wonderware, the modules that plug into it for these other value-add applications, be it manufacturing execution systems, batching, analytics, et cetera, all take advantage of the properties and the definitions that exist in the platform themselves. So I get a huge engineering gain when I add these in as well, too, because I don't have to repeat. I don't have to run multiple systems. It's one system, everything uh, presented to the operator in context, data stored in context, data presented back in context. So with that, I, I think we've got a closing slide. Peter, I know we push all this stuff out to the phone, so we've got a phone client as well. Peter, will you check yours? I, I'm sure it's got something. It's been, it's been ringing already, I, and I think they believe after this wonderful uh, Alexa presentation. Um, and uh, yeah. Alexa, what is Schneider Electric? Schneider Electric SE is a French multinational corporation that specializes in energy management and automation solutions, spanning hardware, software, and services. Thank you. That was not trained. <laughs> the, um, 
Actually, you know, a couple of things I want you to remember. Obviously, this one, uh, again, I think we're a very simple company. We're um, an energy automation company, and we're uh, an automation company. Actually, a real full liner in automation, from discrete to a hybrid to heavy process uh, um, uh, automation. And, um, you know, we have a very simple open and cyber secure architecture or, or the system platform that's, that's running on top of it. Um, and the, the architecture is called EcoStructure. It goes uh, through um, the whole domains where Schneider Electric is, um, is active. Uh, the system platform is agnostic. I think that's something very important to know. All of you know that we don't have 50 plus percent market share. So there is a, a lot of um, uh, uh, installed base out there and um, we can gather data from whoever um, uh, is out there in the installed base. I think that's very important and again um, a, a lot of partners, developers out there um, and uh, an unmatched industrial software application and digital services. You've seen, you've seen some of them. So I guess um, that's what it is and uh, obviously um, we can tell you a lot of things. There are 16 customer examples where, and uh, for some of you who've, who've participated yesterday in the opening ceremony, um, um, Ms. Merkel um, has said it, you know, um, you, we're connecting all these fancy sensors, I think she said, and um, we're not uh, uh, doing it because um, we like the technology but we do it because we create value. We create value for the customer here at 16 um, uh, examples out of the uh, out of the end markets where Schneider Electric is uh, active. It's in your material. You can read some of the some of the facts and some of the the, the dollar values um, or, or value that we have created for uh, for the customer. So um, uh, with that, um, again, I thank you for participating in the um, kind of unidirectional presentation so far. It was not unidirectional. We had uh, we talked directly with the asset. We don't need anybody else. We can talk to them directly. And uh, in case you have questions directly to us, uh, please um, uh, post them or ask them now without um, calling for her. And maybe I shut this out before, shut this down before somebody gives the wrong answer here. Ooh. I'm not sure. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you, Peter, thank you, Norm. So it is time for questions, uh, both online, like we said, please put them in the chat. Use that hashtag, hashtag HM17SE, or if you're in the room, you have a question, please raise your hand and we will take care of you. So I got a couple questions that we've already received, but first, anyone in the room? Burning questions? or else we'll keep going. Okay, so a couple questions we got online. Peter and Norm. So uh, we hear about GE Predix, we hear about Siemens Mind Sphere, we hear about ABB Agility. What makes Schneider Electric EcoStructure different? You know, one, one of the things that is undoubtedly the case, and uh, I hope we have presented that um, uh, EcoStructure was introduced in the year 2007 and our system platform uh, even goes uh, longer back. Uh, it's been uh, elevated and in, a, in an architecture that is unique um, uh, throughout the industry and uh, it's uh, agnostic to whatever is out there. I think uh, that is also fully understood. Uh, obviously, uh, conglomerates have larger numbers with own developers. We have established an ecosystem of partners with 160,000 development engineers out there. Uh, undoubtedly, two million licenses already, uh, already out there. And uh, we have proof points that this is running in more than 100,000 sites. So uh, I think that's a, that's a clear um, a differentiator in the experience that we have in particular in uh, in general automation, but also, you know, being uh, leading in, in hybrid automation market and uh, no, no doubt in the uh, core um, continuous process industries where, where we are active. And this, of course, goes also into, uh, into other applications of infrastructure, utilities, grids, buildings, data centers. So I think there is uh, quite, a bit of, um, um, quite a bit of credibility out there. Good. Questions uh, in the room? 
I've got, okay. So, uh, clarifying question. Uh, you know, we've heard you talk about ecostructure. We heard about system platform. We've heard about Azure today. Um, is what, are all of these our platforms, or what is our platform? It, it, it's a very good uh, question. Let me start off with uh, ecostructure. Ecostructure is an architecture. I think that's very important to understand. The architecture is there are products that are connectable. We have the edge control where the products can be connected to, as we've mentioned. You can also connect the products, the simple products, whether it's a circuit breaker or a drive or an HMI. You can connect them also directly uh, to, uh, to the cloud. So there is uh, obviously a technology stack um, uh, necessary in the cloud to uh, to do that, uh, what, what we offer, and then we need to look at it domain specific. I mean, the um, the requirements of a data center user are different to uh, somebody who's who's operating um, a large plant, and so in in the industrial applications, we're offering our system platform powered by Wonderware for those industrial. Um, uh, applications, but we're using uh, tools that are uh, out there uh, commonly used by many others, whether it is equipment like uh, this here, it can run on anybody's infrastructure, whether it's a cloud that comes from AWS or whether it's a cloud that comes from Microsoft or whether it's a private cloud uh, on-premise, on um, that doesn't really matter to us. And obviously, um, if the customer wants to have an end-to-end -end solution, he can work with us or he can work with the thousands of partners that we have out there to make this happen. Good segue to our, uh, our next question. Um, it's about customers. So what, what is the number one question you're getting from customers today? Is it help me with my digital transformation? Is it help me solve this specific problem? Or is it a combination of the two? I, 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 I try to um, kind of group the, the customers into, um, into um, three buckets because obviously everybody has digitization on their mindset. This is nothing, uh, no, nothing spectacular. But there are the, the, the customers that don't really know how to do it. They're, they're, uh, they need help and support to talk to us. Then there is the second bucket of customers that is already doing sample applications. You know, I've, I've mentioned one of them um, uh, earlier with the, with the car washing machine, and I keep, can give you many more. And a lot of customers are doing that these days. And then there's the third group. That's the most advanced ones. And those, they have done their exercises. They, can, they have seen how they can create value, and they're in mass, mass implementation. To give, you, to give you an example of the third group, because we haven't talked about the third group, there is a, um, a large chemical co um, a company that doesn't want to be uh, named, and they are heavily engaging into, into the 4.0, how they want to move forward, and uh, they have set uh, quite a few um, uh, domains where they say this is something we want to drive forward on the digitization space, and um, uh, with uh, two of their uh, initiatives, uh, we've been selected as, um, as their pr uh, premier partner and we're rolling it out in several hundred plans that they have globally. Um, and we're talking about some augmented intelligence where they can actually look at an asset and the, the user gets additional information blended into, into the glasses um, uh, to, in order to service the, uh, the equipment much, uh, much better. That's all available in the, in the booth, Hall 11, C58. Um, and, um, but we need to, and we, we are helping our customers uh, through those different evolutionary steps. So if they, if they don't know, we'll work with them together and uh, do a little bit of consulting work, also understanding what their pain points are, then you know, do some minimal, minimal viable offers together, and then move into mass implementation. And we see this happening at many customers, uh, as mentioned earlier. We do have a question from, uh, from YouTube Live. Uh, thank you, Felix, for your question. Can you expand on your, I think this is for Norm, can you expand on your work with Microsoft? For example, does your ecostructure system sit on Microsoft servers or your servers? Ex one more. So <laughs> I don't believe I, 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 I used a yeah. vendor name in the yeah. example that I gave. Um, but it, 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 it is representative of the, of the client that we're speaking with, right? Um, so I'll, I'll, 
I'll pause it there because I don't want to speak directly to um, another partner's use of our technologies that I might not be otherwise authorized to speak about at this point in time. Right. But maybe talk about our relationship with Microsoft. Oh, our, our, well, the relationship. The, so, so the relationship that we got with Microsoft actually goes back uh, uh, quite a long time. It goes back to um, 1989, um, originally, when uh, Microsoft first licensed from the Powered by Wonderware group a technology called uh, NetDD, an ability to allow their applications to talk application to application across networks. It was the, it was the fundamental um, pivot point communication device in Microsoft's Windows for Workgroups when Windows for Workgroups first came out. Very, very key technology. From that point forward, we have had a very, very tight uh, relationship with Microsoft from a technology standpoint. So yes, we participate in all the usual activities and facilities such as MSDN, et cetera, that, that Microsoft makes available to the market. But because of those early formative years to where we got involved with junior engineers that are now the people running the organization, uh, we've enjoyed our unfair share um, of Microsoft's attention from an R&D to R&D standpoint. So very, very tight relationship. Great. Any questions in the room? Yes. Um, my question is for, for Norm, right? Um, so can you elaborate on the system plan from 2017, what it is really? Uh, I know Wonderware is, used to be a scatter software. So now you say that this system platform 2017 includes IOT, MES, SCADA. So what, what is this really, this platform is about? Thank you, very good question. So um, the, you're right, from, from a powered by Wonderware standpoint, we have had InTouch, which is an HMI uh, capability. Uh, prior versions of system platform were positioned in the market as a SCADA platform, right? So we've always positioned it as a platform. And, 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 in our, and in our mind, the key to a platform is a platform needs to be a vehicle that enables other applications to sit on top of it and provides value add when housing those other applications. So we've always had that capability in system platform. That's why we call it system platform. What's unique in 2017 is the architectural dimensions that we've been able to add into it, right? So now you don't need to bring with you, let's say, the full uh, SCADA componentry of system platform if you just want to implement directly from small device through edge controller up into a cloud-based data store. So radical changing of the architectures that the system can support. Uh, most recently over the last couple of years, radical change in the scale of systems that we can support. And then third, the dimension that we're introducing here quite, quite, quite large in 2017 is the ability to, to have what we call an operations management interface. In fact, we've named the client uh, for now, InTouch OMI, Operations Management Interface, and the ability to be the uh, contextualized framework to bring together many, many disparate systems, right? So this was not existent before, hasn't been existent. We were able to do it with our own applications and pull our own applications in, but now we're extending that out to third-party applications, some of which we'll provide, some of which other, others within that 4,000 uh, company, 160,000 uh, engineering community will add to the market and bring to the market. So I'm getting waved in the back. I think there's another question that's come in. Yeah, one more question, and then we're out of time. Thanks, Craig, for your question. Quick question. How will legacy Wonderware InTouch installations be able to leverage System Platform 17 to extend their product life cycles? Right, great question. So um, we've, got, we've got a lot of folks with uh, the uh, uh, Powered by Wonderware HMI offer called, called InTouch. So um, not only does the InTouch act as a client to system platform uh, for those clients that want it to act like a client for system platform, but we're actively building in capabilities so that I can move my InTouch application, if you will, onto system platform. Now recognize there are two uh, internally different things the way they're built. One is a flat tag structure. The other one is a hierarchical object structure but we are building the capabilities so that I can take that flat tag structure and bring it into uh, system platform. So for those clients that want to um, move completely over, they can move completely over. For those clients that want to run in a hybrid mode and move part of the application over, they can do that. For those clients that want to uh, leave the InTouch application resident, but start to build new capability in system platform and have InTouch be a data pump into system platform, they can do that as well. So again, that precept of 
not destroying value, actually allowing clients to extend and build on the value is uh, central to what we're doing there. So thank you very much for that, Marty. Thank Craig. <laughs> it was Craig's no, Craig. question. <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you, Craig. All right, so uh, Peter said at the beginning we're a simple company. We are also an on-time company. So we are right, uh, right at the hour. So we are going to, um, we're going to cut it. There, thank you very much for all of you in the room, for being with us, for you online. Thank you, please be on the lookout for, for your digital press kits. Uh, and if you have more questions, reach out to your local contacts. We'll make sure you get those answered. Enjoy Hanover Mesa, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you for now. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.